Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I play through Table Golf Association. And I thank you for joining me for the solo playthrough of Table Golf Association. Table Golf Association is a dexterity game designed by John Garcia. And I've been provided with a review copy by him and I really appreciate this opportunity. So in table golf, you're going to be playing different holes in the golf course. And this game is really designed around making your own holes and designing them the way you want. In the book itself, it provides three holes. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. This is the first one, the easy one. And I'll go through the rules on this one and then I'll play two more holes after that. But the way this works is, of course, you set up your ball at at the tee off here and you can choose which difficulty you want the blue white or red I'm gonna go ahead and do the blue here and so as you can see there's different terrains here that we're gonna be dealing with when you flick the ball because you're gonna be flicking the ball with your finger or uh, some times on your dominant hand non-dominant hand your thumbs it's gonna vary based on the terrain that you're using and so right now my ball is at the tee off so I can just use whatever finger I'd like to flick the ball. However, there is a distance limit to how much your ball can travel. So as you can see here, the fairway has a max fly of seven tiles and that's seven tiles beyond the tile that the ball is on. So in this case here at the tee off, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Other terrains like rough has a max fly of five, sand is four, trees is three, and water has different rules depending on when you hit it into the water and whatnot. So like on a par three, which this course or this hole here is a par three, if I land in a water hazard off the tee shot, I must hit it again from the tee with a one shot penalty. And then if placing a ball where it crosses hazard causes the ball to be moved closer to the hole, players must hit again from the previous spot with a one-shot penalty. And of course, the normal rules for the water is that the ball is placed where it first crossed into the water hazard. Players take a one-shot penalty and marks it from that spot. And then the cliff here is, says that the ball is considered out of bounds. Players must re-hit from the previous spot and receive a one-shot penalty. And then the ridge, there's these special ridges here. If it lands on the, the spot with the squiggly lines here, it's going to roll downhill. And it'll roll downhill past the arrow into the next tile, whatever terrain that tile is. So in this case here, if we land here, it's going to roll, roll, roll all the way down into the sand hazard here. Or if it lands here, it'll roll down into the rough. And so some extra minor rules here that... The player can't rest their finger against or touch the ball prior to taking the shot or they receive a one-shot penalty. There's some rules regarding the ball being between two terrains. And if the shot travels further than the tiles max fly but remains on the board, hit the next shot from the previous spot with no additional penalty shot. And so you really have to be careful how much you flick that ball because if you exceed and go off the board, you're going to re-hit it with a penalty. If you exceed and land on the board, still, you're still going to have to re-hit it. And then, of course, if you go too short, you might land in the sand trap like right here or on other hazards. And so before each hit, we're going to be testing to see if there's wind or weather. And so first you roll the die. And so this tells you right here that there's going to be light wind on the hit, all right? If it was this symbol here, it would be heavy wind. And if it was this symbol here, it would be no wind. Now, since there's wind, we're going to line up the wind dial here with the arrows pointing to the ball and the other arrow pointing to the, the hole. And we're, we'll spin this here. And however that lands, that is going to be the direction in which the ball is going to travel after it lands an additional length. In the light wind here, that's one ball length. And in the heavy wind, it's going to be two ball lengths. And so with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and take the first shot. <laughs> All right, that's not a bad shot. Now there is a rule regarding it being on the lip. You can see it's 
it's right there on the lip and so normally when the ball lands like that there would be an adjustment based off the wind and the wind would push it in that direction one ball length but according to the rules here at the bottom if your shot goes in the hole or stays halfway on the lip there is no wind adjustment made but being the great shot that it is it's still not in the hole it has to be all the way in the hole so i'm gonna have to flick it in like so and now i've scored two on a par three and so depending on how you want to write it on the scorecard i guess I just put my name here but uh you'll write the par here and then you'll write an adjustment to that based on how you did and so i have a minus one to that because i i completed it in two shots at this point i'm going to go ahead and reset the board and set up for the second hole and i think i'll have to use my other camera stand to zoom out a little bit further all right i'm all set up now for the next of the two or of the three holes that i'm doing for this playthrough and this is a par four and uh it's got a lot going on here so a couple things to keep in mind if i land on these ridge symbols here that ball is going to roll straight into the water there's some some cliffs here so those are out of bounds yeah there's a lot there's a lot going on here i'm not sure what i'm aiming for i mean i would hope that i'd land on these fairway spots without touching the, the ridges so the ball doesn't start rolling but it's going to be difficult and then of course i have seven possible tiles that i can hit to so there's one two three four five six seven so this is as far as i can go here and i got to keep that in mind now i guess it wouldn't be the worst thing for it to go in the water here because it would appear right here and i'd get to hit off the fairway so maybe that's what i should do <laughs> i'm not sure we'll we'll see because if i land it in the rough and maybe the rough here would be good i can go five tiles from here so it'd be one two three four five i don't know i don't know <laughs> i don't know what the best shot is here I definitely don't want to land in the sand and I, I really want to land on one of the fairways but maybe landing in the sand here is a possibility as well we'll we'll see how this goes so the first thing we're going to do is going to roll for weather and i've got heavy wind great and the wind's going to go that way Let's see if i'm lining this up fairly well here yeah so the wind will go that way assuming I land in a spot that will allow the wind adjustment. But I should keep that in mind because if I land it, let's say, right here, that uh, the wind will put it right on the fairway, and that will actually be a good spot for me. So that's what I'm going to aim for. So here we go. I'm going to give it my first shot. <laughs> uh, that was a bad shot, wasn't it? Uh, that put me straight out of bounds. So that adds a... Uh, <laughs> that means I have to reshoot and uh, that costs me a shot. All right, we'll give it a shot again. Oh man, that would have been a great shot had I been able to hit that far, but that's eight tiles away from the tee. And so that's not going to work. So <laughs> I had to reshoot again. Now this one doesn't cost me a penalty because it landed on the board and not in a hazard. So... I, I get to reshoot that shot, but man, that would have been a great shot. All right, so check out that shot. Now, we're in an interesting position here, because here's the thing. I'm half on the fairway and half on a hazard. So there's two, two types of rules for this. You can do the advanced rule, where if the plastic ring around the ball is actually touching the hazard, it counts as being on the hazard. Or you can use the other rule, and the other rule, it talks about it here on the little cheat sheet here. If you can't determine which terrain your ball is on, roll a weather die. The result of sunny means the player chooses which terrain effects of the ball for the next shot. A windy result means that uh, the player applies the effect of a more unfavorable terrain. But as I had forgotten, we actually have a wind adjustment here, and I had rolled a heavy wind, so it's going to go two ball lengths away from that spot so one ball length would be here and let's see we're lining up with that arrow there and the second ball length would be here so it places my ball actually in the rough 
And that's kind of good or bad for me uh, because right now I I can only hit it five tiles away. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So I can try for these tiles here or maybe this one here to get a better shot. Boy, I, I don't know which one's better. <laughs> and on top of that, for the rough, I have to use any finger on my non-dominant hand. So that's going to make things a little more difficult here. But I'll go ahead and take my next shot. All right, so that's not a bad shot. And so I have to go ahead and roll this die again to see whether it's in the trees or the fairway. Wind symbol will be trees and the fairway will be the sun. We'll see what happens. All right, I got a sun, so that's gonna be in my favor. So I'll play it as though it's on the fairway. And if I counted right, this is gonna be my fourth shot. So hopefully we can make it in the hole on this shot, but we'll see. All right, that's not a terrible shot here. Let me adjust the camera so you can see. And there we go, I landed on the rough and I'm just a short ways away from the hole. So I'll go ahead and try and hit it in there. Again, I have to use my non-dominant hand. Oh no, that's out of bounds now. And so I'm going on to shot number six. I have to place the ball back where it was before and uh, try again. And there you have it. That was shot number six for a par four, so that's a plus two for me. And so it's not looking good for me right now because that was par four, plus two. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna design the next hole. I'm not gonna use the one in the book because it might be a little bit too big for this table, but I'll go ahead and design one that'll fit better on this table. And just uh, as a side note, I was supposed to roll for wind for every shot. And I, I just, I missed on that. Uh, I apologize, it should have been for all the shots pretty much except for that first shot. So keep that in mind. Uh, um, that would have possibly changed the, the outcome unless of course I rolled uh, sunny all the time. And that, that final shot wouldn't have mattered since it went in a hole. But uh, yeah, definitely keep that in mind. So uh, a roll and spin for wind every shot. I'll try to do better on the third hole with that. All right, I've gone ahead and set up this hole here. I just kind of made it on the fly, designing it how I wanted it. And so in the rule book, it tells you how to determine par for each hole. Basically, it should be fair and you should count kind of how many shots it would take and maybe go one less to make sure that it's possible to do a birdie. In this case here, I would imagine that hitting one here, maybe two, then three. I'm gonna go with a par three for this one. Like I said, I just kind of set it up this way. I wanted something that turned around the corner. And so that's, that's what's going on here. It's gonna be a little difficult here if I land on one of these ridges here and it goes into the water, or if I, um, if I overshoot and go out of bounds. But we'll see how this one plays out. I, I like the looks of it, so <laughs> let's give it a shot. So first we're gonna roll for weather. And we've got heavy wind again. So I'll go ahead and spin this. I've already kind of lined this up to where, again, the arrow here is to the player, where the player is at, and that's where the, the golf ball is. And then to the target, which is the hole. So that's the direction. And so it's gonna, the wind's gonna push it this way if I land on normal terrain. We'll see what happens. And of course I roll out of bounds and uh, I got to take a shot again from the tee. Now in the rule book, it does say that you do not adjust wind if it goes out of bounds like that. So the wind will stay this direction. Wow, I kind of lucked out there, but we got to go ahead and adjust the, the golf ball here. So we got one length there and then two lengths here. And so it'll rest in that position there. All right, so this is the first time hitting from the trees here. So we have to use the middle finger on the non-dominant hand and it can't fly more than three tiles. Wow, that's gonna be tough. So max tiles, basically this is as far as it can go here. And that's not, not horrible for me, but uh, I'm definitely not gonna make par because this will be shot number three 
And uh, yeah, that's how it's gonna go. But it's gonna be middle finger on the non-dominant hand. But of course, we gotta roll for wind. <laughs> I told you I'd try to remember that. And we have light wind. And so this time we're gonna turn the wind dial to face the direction from the ball to the hole there and go ahead and spin it. And so it's gonna bring the ball back a little bit uh, when it lands. As long as I'm not too close to that cliff, then we're okay. And here we go. Well, <laughs> that was an overshot if I ever saw one. Yeah, that's not good. So <laughs> what is that, number four now? I'm on number four, let's try this again. That, that couldn't have gone any better. Now the wind was light wind, so I'll bring it back a ball length. So right there, that's, that's actually a really good shot. And so I'm gonna go ahead and roll for wind for the next one. It's sunny, so there's no wind. It's in the trees, so I have to use my middle finger on my non-dominant hand. So let's try to get it in the hole. <laughs> so, so close. Um, at this point, I just gotta tap it in and then I will score. All right, you, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got a plus three on that on a par three. So my grand total is a plus four. Ouch, that's awful. <laughs> so the, it was a total of 10 for par, but I have a plus four on that. 14 is my score. Uh, that was pretty bad. And so there you have it though. This is the solo playthrough of Table Golf Association. I apologize for how bad I was and for missing the, the wind rolls in the second hole. But there you go. I have to tell you, this game puts a smile on my face. It really does. Uh, it's quite fun. And uh, I'm not good at dexterity games, uh, probably because all the arthritis in both of my hands is pretty bad. But I'm still having a blast with it. Um, yeah, it's a great game. So feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you so much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.